If there's anybody on that doesn't know me, I am Mary Nabe of Stampin' Peace with Mary Nabe. And also um, my business page here is called Stampin' Scrap with Mary Nabe. I have been a demonstrator for 11 years and had no intention of building a business, but I have built a business and I'm happy to say I it was probably one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. So I love what I do and the best part of what I do um, is being able to share it with all of you. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for sharing. All you have to do is click the word share and that will bring other people to us to watch also. And I will be giving away um, a card, I believe, at the end of this session. And you simply need to just comment throughout the video, or the live, I should say. Um, sharing helps, and you can just type the word shared. Um, and that's another way you get entered into the drawing. I use commentpicker.com. So the more you comment, the more chances you have to win. Not to mention, it helps me a lot to know that you're following along. If people have questions, they're liking what they're seeing. Um, sometimes people use the comments to add their own ideas to what I'm doing, and um, I always love that. And of course, thumbs up and hearts are always nice too. So let's get started. I'm going to be honest and say this is a crazy, crazy week for me. I feel like I say that every week though, but yes, it started out kind of rough. Um, but all is well and, um, it's just crazy. I'm getting my basement finished. I was going to jump on there live a couple hours ago and do my reminder from my basement that's all, um, framed and whatever and give you a sneak peek. Well, they worked on electricity yesterday and today and, um, I want to flip on the light down there. We don't, I don't actually have the lights in. They just wired everything. So I'm not happen, not sure what happened to the lighting that was already there, but I didn't want to mess with anything. So you'll have to get a peek of that another time. But anyways, tonight um, I'm kind of just winging it, but I've got an easy fun fold card to show you. And I just want to show you what I consider um, simple and elegant. You know, a lot of times we, um, uh, you know, we think you have to have more, 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 bigger, better, on all, all that to um, make your cards really stand out and make people say, wow. And sometimes less is more. There is something known as simple elegance, or you've heard the term less is more, like I just said. Um, and oftentimes that tends to be my style. And I'm going to show you some of that tonight. So those of you that have just hopped on, thank you for being with me. If you could hit the, your um, share, that would be awesome. Hi to Monique, Cindy, Mary Lou. Not sure if I got everybody, but welcome to all of you. Okay, so tonight we're going to be using some copper embossing powder. We are going to use the Holly. I love Holly. Okay, it's, to me it just screams elegant Christmas. I love Holly and berries. Um, so I'm using the Holly from the Chris, Christmas Gleaming bundle. Um, comes with this stamp set and of course the um, two pack, uh, two punch pack of the small and the large ornament punches. And then it's got um, this fun hammered metal 3D embossing folder as part of its suite. And um, while these sentiments are nice, I might be pulling some sentiments from the Christmas Rose stamp set that um, is available this month only, limited time while supplies last. Um, so it's not in a catalog, but you can find it on my website. But I really, I like the script in here and I just love the sentiments and I like the size of the Merry Christmas. So I might be pulling some of these in as well. But my focus is going to be um, the holly. So first of all, as far as stamping, when you are, 
Wouldn't you know that's the one thing I didn't get out? Okay, so when you are embossing, you'll want to use Versamark ink. Now there are other inks you can use and that's perfectly fine, but if you have Versamark ink, this will work with any of your embossing powders, okay? So it's a good staple to have. And mine looks kind of old and ugly, it is. Um, it, it feels different too, it's stickier. Um, it's not water-based, okay? It's called a watermark ink. And the reason they call it a watermark, um, let me grab a piece of scrap and I'll show you. So basically, you could stamp this, I need some scrap paper, and we'll wait for this to show up a little bit. But it, it actually gives you a very subtle tone on tone on your colored cardstock, okay? Makes that watermark look to it, okay? Can you see that? There's a delay, so I can't see if I'm actually holding it in the right spot at the right angle so you can see. Okay, I think you can. All right, so that's one thing it does. Um, so I could have a sheet of Mossy Meadow cardstock and stamp this randomly all over to give it um, kind of that watermark background look, okay? So that's one thing that Versamark does. And then the second, of course, is that we use it with our embossing powders, okay? Karen, thanks for clarifying that you're seeing it okay. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So I don't have a fancy dish or anything like that for my embossing powder. I did get some cute little containers recently, but because I'm having my basement done, I didn't even get those out and together with embossing powder in. So the best thing to use if you don't have a fun container is just a piece of scrap paper. Give it a very nice crease down the center because you'll use that crease to help you pour the excess powder back into its container, okay? So one thing I did ahead of time was I did um, cut out some um, squares from Very Vanilla using the stitch shapes dies, okay? This might be brand new, I'm not sure. No, it's open, okay. Wasn't sure if I needed to pull off the paper top. So I'm going to, oh, embossing buddy. Do you remember that tip I showed you the other day? If you have, um, hi Carol. Oh, I bet it is chilly in Minnesota. Do you remember the tip I showed you the other day? If you have stickers that you want to use as embellishments, but you want to pop them up, with um, dimensionals. You put your dimensionals on that piece and before you remove the backing of the dimensionals, you tap the embossing buddy so you, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the sticky part of the sticker gets covered in this powder, but it doesn't get on your and, uh, dimensionals. Then you pull off the adhesive back of the dimensionals and stick them on, okay? So what the embossing buddy does when you're embossing is you rub it over all your cardstock. Oh, Cecilia and Kiki, thanks for joining me. They're on my team. Um, you rub it over the cardstock that you're going to emboss on. This helps to prevent the embossing powder from um, sticking where you don't want it to because you might have just a little teeny tiny speck of that powder and not notice um, and then when you heat the whole thing you've got that odd mark um, where you don't want it so it kind of gets rid of the static on your cardstock so you want to ink up your stamp really well with the Versamark ink I should put this here so you can see that and I'm going to do this at kind of an angle Press it down really well. Okay. Now it's difficult to see it because it's just that little faint watermark image. But before that ink dries, I want to put the 
embossing powder on it. And I like to move mine back and forth all around. Okay, now see, I got a little excess where I don't want it. So I'm just gonna tap that off. I also will tap it on the back sometimes, although that was too hard and I took off too much of the powder. And if that's the case, or if you miss getting the powder on some, you just, you know what helps with this, and I should have had one ready, um, just a little um, paintbrush or, um, or even a makeup brush. I can't get that one there. Okay. And now I think I'm ready to heat it. But yes, a little paintbrush or a makeup brush so that if there is that stray bit of powder, you can just brush it away. Okay. Oh, somebody else enjoys the holly. Oh, nice to know, Marilyn and Cindy. Thanks everybody who's sharing. I appreciate it so much. You are helping me build my business. And I can honestly say I've really been watching my numbers on Facebook, on my blog, um, things like that. And my numbers are going up. My numbers of viewing are going up. Numbers of followers are going up. And I know it is in part um, with the help from all of you I get for sharing. And you can share during the video or after. Doesn't matter when, any time helps. Okay. I believe it was my friend Marilyn um, Goodrich who gave me a set of these um, clothespins. There's magnets on one side and then designer series paper on the other. And just, she just gave it as a little gift. Um, but I like to use them for this purpose. When you have small pieces, you don't want to be burning your fingers. Um, and it's not like an iron hot, but you know, it can get too hot. Okay, so there's one. Um, and before I color and we make our cards, I think I'm just gonna do a couple, a couple more if that's okay with you. That might be the most efficient way to do it. Now I will tell you, this reminds me of a tip. I will tell you that when you want to emboss several things, the most important thing is that you get the powder on the wet ink right away, okay? The pow you need that powder, oh I forgot the embossing buddy. Uh, you need to get that powder on the ink while it's still wet. Okay, you don't necessarily have to heat it immediately, but you do need to get the powder on it quickly. Okay, powder, the embossing powder is not gonna stick to dry ink. Okay. Oh, I really needed my little brush. Didn't even think of it. Okay, so I'm gonna set that one aside. I'm going to do the same here. Ink it up with the Versamark really well. And remember, make sure you're um, moving your piece around so that it gets on, <clears throat> excuse me, ink on all sides. Okay. Again, I forgot the embossing buddy. It's sitting right here. If there weren't a, a delay, I'd say, hey, ladies, you got to interrupt me, okay? And I'm also, I've got some cardstock cut. Um, this is four and a quarter by three inches, and I'm going to be using this on a card, too, I think. So I'm going to just put some, I want to look at that. Okay. I think I'm going to put it like this at this angle. some embossing powder on it. Tap off the excess, looks pretty good. Okay. Put a little more here. Just make sure I get it all. Okay, so now I'm ready to heat these. 
the embossing of Kathy thanks. I missed it again, didn't I? The, the darn embossing buddy. I'm good when I'm by myself, but remembering that when I have an audience is a little different. Okay, so now I'm going to heat this. Now you want to be careful that you're not blowing right on that embossing powder because you don't want to blow that all over. Also, if you have a ceiling fan in your room, turn off your ceiling fan before you start using embossing powder. Just a tip. And I, learned, I know that from experience. I don't have a ceiling fan in this room, but in my craft room in my last house I did, and I made that mistake once. Okay, so I'll set this aside. I'm gonna heat emboss these other two, and then we are ready to go and move on to the next step. You can see that this happens very quickly. You don't need to move your heat gun around a lot. In fact, that doesn't help. Just little watch it. And as it starts to melt, as that powder starts to melt, and you can see it because it turns shiny, you just slightly move your embossing tool, your heat tool, to the air, other areas. And as long as it all looks shiny, it's done. And it does dry very quickly. You don't have to, oh, I just stuck my thumb in that. You don't have to worry about, well, that's all right. I'm not going to, I won't do this one then. Um, you don't have to worry about sticking your finger in um, sticky or wet embossing. It dries very, very quickly, almost instantaneously. Just a few seconds. Okay. And... Don't throw that embossing powder away. No waste here. You just do this and put it right back into your container, whether it be the original container like this or some cute little plastic container with a spoon. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing I want to show you is an easy, um, I'll, I'll just call it an easy fun fold. I don't really have a name for it. Um, you're going to start with a piece of cardstock. Your base is going to be four and a quarter inches by 11 inches. So you'll still get two out of one sheet of cardstock. It is scored at um, five and a half inches. I'll do it up here so you can see better. You'll want to score it at five and a half inches, which this already is, but I'll do it again. And then I'm going to swing this arm out because I need to score it at six and a half. Okay, so one and a half and six and a half. Put this aside. Okay, I'm going to bring in my bone folder to burnish the folds real well. Okay, and then the second fold that we scored at six and a half, um, fold it the other direction and burnish that fold. So it's kind of like the accordion or, or Z fold. Okay, now what we're going to do is actually seal this one inch part. Okay. So I'm just going to... And you do want your adhesive close to that fold. Okay, close to the second fold, I should say. Okay. So this is what I have. So now I've got this one inch strip here. And then the rest of my card ends up being um, four and a half by four and a quarter. Okay, this section, the main section, four and a half by four and a quarter. So let's get started decorating. I'm going to put this here so it's a little bit easier for you to see. Okay, I have this strip of copper foil, and I'm going to cut this down to four inches. And I'm gonna um, cut it down to three quarters inches. Okay. 
Okay. And I'm going to adhere this to that left part of my card. Okay. And then I have this to work with, four and a half by four and a quarter. So essentially my next layer, I want to be four and a quarter by four inches. And I think I am going to pull some pretty mossy meadow Holly DSP from the Brightly Gleaming, I think that's what it's called. Yes, Brightly Gleaming Specialty Designer Series paper. One of my favorites ever. People who were at my Creative Escape Weekend will recognize this because this is what we used. Um, it was one of the products they were given and um, used throughout the make and takes that I prepared for them. Okay, oops, I did five and a quarter. I'm cutting the regular size card base. I need to take that extra inch off for that fold. Okay, so there, it fits nicely just like that. I'm going to adhere this. How am I doing for creating on the fly here? Sometimes you just gotta wing it. Okay. But I think it's nice for you too that you get a little taste of how I how my brain thinks and how I do the creating. So this is what I have so far. Okay. I want to um try and decide, do I want this? I think I'm gonna use this, yes. And I pre-cut another square layer, okay? But before I adhere these pieces, I want to color this. And let me bring my scrap paper back in because you know um, the Stampin' Blends can go through your cardstock. It doesn't really transfer on, but you can see it through. So I always like to just put um, a scrap paper behind it. Okay. I don't know why, but I always do my berries first. And you can do as much blending and such as you'd like. That's what these are all about. An easy way for us to um, get a more artistic look to our coloring with the blends. Okay? I love these markers. In fact, I'm, I tend to use them much more than my Stampin' Write markers, although I certainly wouldn't want to be without those either. Do any of you work with the blends? If you haven't worked with the blends, please don't be afraid to try them. Um, super easy and just fun. And it is surprising what difference it makes having just a, some different shades of the same color in there. And then people who are really great at using Stampin' Blends, they can blend all kinds of different colors together, which I think is pretty incredible. Okay, so I think you can see the different shades of the Cherry Cobbler and Mossy Meadow that I'm getting. Oh yes, Joyce, I do know that you love those blends. You have two tips on each Stampin' Blends marker. A fine tip, as noted by the fine line and a more of a painter, um, paintbrush-like end, okay? Oh, coloring is relaxing. I agree with you, Cindy. I find it very relaxing, too. Um, it is one of the activities I do with um, one of my uh, dementia clients, and, you know, it's great for her, 
and it gives me a reason to uh, gives me something to talk about and keep her engaged with. Um, but I find it relaxing too. So, or if she's having a hard day, we just sit and color. It kind of takes you back to when you were young and life was simple too. Okay, so I'm going to add that with some dimensionals. Okay, and oops, stick into my Stampin' Blend. And I'm just going to put this right in the center of that card. And I think this makes a pretty statement. Okay. Now I do want to dress up the inside a little bit. So my thought here is to put a piece of the copper foil in there. So for that space, it's going to be four by four and a quarter. And isn't this just a really easy, easy fun fold? You make one extra score line and um, cut that seam and it kind of, it's kind of like opening a book, okay? Or a, um, like something in a binder, okay? All right, so I'm gonna stick this down. I'm gonna switch here. So as I was saying, in addition to getting my basement finished, I'm also getting ready for stamp classes in Cincinnati. I'll be going there from Columbus to Cincinnati and back on Thursday. And then I'm leaving early Friday morning to fly to Atlanta for the um, Stampin' Up! on stage local event. And I'm meeting my friend and upline, Susie Brunk, in Atlanta. She's at her Florida home right now. Um, and then I'm super excited because on Sunday, so the event is Friday and Saturday. And um, let me cut this. Friday and Saturday, but on Sunday morning, I'm going to fly to Florida with Susie and I'll stay there for a few days and fly back home on Thursday. So I'm really, really looking forward to a getaway. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. Do you think I'm going to put a sentiment inside? And I'm going to use May This Christmas Fill your heart with warmth and love. That's what I'm going to use. Um, do you think I need to put a holly in here or not? Hmm. Hmm. I think not, because I like to write, okay? But I will stamp this with Cherry Cobbler. You know, Cherry Cobbler and Mossy Meadow, a really um, classic and elegant color combination for Christmas. And of course, it goes nicely with white, but um, I love it with the vanilla. Okay, there you have it. Now you might want to stamp your envelope and emboss that, or at least color it, okay? Um, so that's something you can do with that. And that, is that my, my first card? What do you think? Sue, thanks for joining me, and thanks for sharing as well. Hi, Teresa. Who else has jumped on? 
Okay, I'm trying to watch comments and see if there are questions, things like that. But I love it. It's simple, it's classic, and it's elegant. Okay. And embossing just creates a, um, what do I want to say, a rich, elegant appearance too. Okay. So there's our first card. Okay. Second card. I'm also starting with a uh, four and a quarter by 11 inch piece of very vanilla. And I've scored it at five and a half inches. And maybe I, oh, I put it back. I'm gonna give a nice crease to that. I am going to go ahead and color this quickly. And then I'll show, and this is, I mean, you're gonna be like, wow, Mary, that is too easy. But it's gonna be gorgeous, okay? Hey Sue, I'm happy you're here. Doesn't matter that you're jumping on late and you all know that you can also um, go back and view these at any time. I also post them to my blog, usually, usually within a week, not always, but usually within a week, because then I can reach a whole nother audience as well. And I also share them to my YouTube channel. So lots of ways to view. And you don't have to, if you're going back on to Stampin' Scrap with Mary Nabe or Stampin' Peace VIP group, it, it's on whichever site I was on. If I was on my business page or if I'm on my VIP group, that's where it is held. But you don't have to look through the dates and the posts. Just click the word video and it will get you to them and a little picture and a description comes up for each of them and you can pick out what you want to go back and see or see if you missed any that you want to go back and look for. Oh, I did have, I was talking about my numbers. I did have something exciting happen. So remind me at the end and I'll try to show you that. I know I haven't been on social media as long as some other demonstrators and other business people, but I am enjoying it. I'm learning as I go along, and it's been a good experience. And if I can't be with you all in person, this is the next best thing. Now, as I get my basement finished, I'll um, be hosting more events in my home. I hope to even be doing um, some weekend crops uh, for small groups. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to adhere this once again to the square copper square, or the copper square I cut out using the stitch shapes dies. They are awesome. The set includes squares, circles, and ovals. Honestly, it's sort of my go-to um, die cut set, but we have so many great ones. And that stitching, that is really a very uh, popular and very trendy thing you see in crafting right now, as well as home decor and even fashion. Okay. Oh, what is going on with my thing? I got, I think I pressed my finger there and it tends to get gummy. There. And of course you can turn it any way you want. Maybe, should we go a different direction this time? I really like this direction best though. It really doesn't matter. And I'm just putting it so that it's evenly spaced on the two sides and the top, okay? And that's it. It's a great note card, okay, uh, just as it is. Or you can add a sentiment. How about if on this one I add 
wishing you the gifts of the season, peace and joy. And you could put it right under it. You could put it to the side here, centered at the bottom. I like this spot or right under it, centered right under it. And you might see my head a little bit here. I'm trying to look over the top to make sure I line it up with the square as well. Oh, good. I did well. Okay. Isn't that pretty? Super simple. And you can write your message inside or you could stamp a big Merry Christmas in there. Okay. Um, let's stop for a moment here and think if I did want to dress this up even more, what else could I do to it? Okay. What else can I do to it? Number one, we could use another layer of very vanilla and run it through an embossing folder. I think it would be beautiful with the Subtles embossing folder. Um, we have that one with all the leaves or the curly circles. Um, even that hammered one that I showed you. Okay, that would look neat behind there as well. Okay, um, so that's one thing you could do. Yes, Joyce, DSP, put some DSP behind it. Um, kind of like we did on the first card. That's another way to dress it up. How about a ribbon? Yes. Sue, you were reading my mind. Great minds think alike. And the one that comes to mind for me is this one that already says Merry Christmas. It's a vanilla in color and it um, has the words in uh, copper. So that's really cool. So that would look neat. Now, if I use this ribbon, because it has the writing on the ribbon, I probably would not put this on my front. I would put that on the inside of my card, okay? The other thing you could do is actually use it as a band, you know, maybe cut it so it's this way, or cut this Merry Christmas, and maybe put it on, um, layer it on a, uh, mossy meadow or cherry cobbler strip of cardstock and put it down there okay so lots of things you can see how um, you can build many different cards create many different cards with this one basic layout okay i agree sue i would love the subtle embossing folder behind it i think somebody had a question back here i think somebody asked the size of the squares um the squares are from the Stitch Shapes Framelits dies. Okay, they've been around for a while. You get four ovals, four circles, and four squares. Mine are kind of a mess right now. The circles are on the other side. Um, but I use the two largest ones. If you don't have those, the size is, let me flip over here and see. Um, it looks like the vanilla one is two by two, and it looks like the copper one is, I would say, it's a little more than two and a half, maybe two and a half to two and five eighths inches for the copper square, okay, just to give you an idea. But again, it doesn't have to be exactly that, okay? Um, you can create the same basic layout, same basic card with squares that are a little bit smaller or perhaps a smaller border okay I just chose to use the stitched squares alrighty okay card number two um, okay for card number three should we do another yeah let's just do this okay so let's do this one together. While I'm coloring the holly, I want somebody to tell me what to do with the front, the card front. Should I leave it plain vanilla? If not, what should I do to it? Okay, and I'm gonna watch. Oh, Char, I did see you mention um, I hope the copper paper sticks around for a long time. 
I love the metallic inks as well. And yes, it is sad that we can't buy the refills. I don't know why we are not carrying them over. I don't know why um, we can't get any more. And I'm frustrated because I, I waited to buy them. And no sooner did I buy them and they made the announcement. So I'm sorry to say that. But, you know, I think that those original ink pads will last us a good long while. Yes, but I agree. I wish we had the metallic inks in our, um, in our, what do I want to say, our regular line of products, that it would be in the annual catalog on a regular basis. Okay, first thing I saw was hammered copper front. Let's try it, right? You never know until you try. I got so much stuff here. This is crazy, people. I think this will be big enough. Yes. And I'll just I'll just cut it the standard size, five and a quarter by four inches. I will actually it's good that um you asked for this because what I wanted to tell you is on this one. It is a 3D embossing folder, okay? We now have just regular embossing folders or we have 3D embossing folders. When you have a 3D embossing folder, let me make sure I have the right, oh, I hope I have it here. I have two magnetic platforms and not my regular one. Okay, obviously that's mixed up with something. Let me see if I can do it with this. But anyways, we have this blue plate. This is better for the 3D embossing folders. This eliminates us having to do any kind of shim or things like that. I don't know where my regular plate is. Like I said, I have things everywhere in my garage. Nothing's really in the yeah, this is not the right one. Okay, let me. I was trying to get away using my magnetic plate, and that's just a little bit too thick. So I'll go to my old, old platform. Okay, let's see. All right, I'm gonna flip this tab and do it one more time because I think we can get a better impression using the other tab. I don't even know if they still make these um, these original platforms anymore because there's so many different ones. I do think two colors of cardstock would be a neat way to go as well. I agree, I like that as well. But honestly, I haven't used this um, hammered embossing folder too much, so I'm excited to try it. Okay, and I'll just add some adhesive to the back. Okay, this is, that's what it is. I have this gummy ball right there. Might have been better off. It's hard working with the back of the foil paper sometime. I might have been better off just using my um, multi-purpose glue. You know, the Tombow multi-purpose glue or green glue. It's not green, but sometimes people refer to it that way because of how it's packaged. Okay, so I have that. Okay, Char, you're right. Just flip it. <laughs> if you don't get it on the original platform right the first time, you just flip it. Okay, any other thoughts how to finish this off? Teresa, I don't have any information on um, a new embossing die cutting machine. I, I wish I did have some information to share. Um, I'm curious to know if they have any kind of information for us when we attend the on state, uh, Stampin' Up! Onstage events later this week. 
And of course, if we get information that I can share, you know that I will. I try to always share the information as soon as we get it or as we're allowed. Sometimes um, they tell us what dates we can share on. Okay, any other thoughts how to finish this card? I could just add this layer to it. Or I could do something more. Any thoughts? I'm going to use my other end this time. Yes, I will get to see the um, 2020 Occasions Catalog as well as the um, Celebration Brochure. So that's something exciting to look forward to. One of the great perks of being a demonstrator and attending the events. We used to kind of have a gag order on those things now, like we couldn't even show pictures of the products that we won or received at the events. And the last few events, they've been letting us um, take photographs and share them right from the event. So that's nice. So, and watch for me, I might be jumping on live here and there. Okay. Joyce, it pro I don't know what day of the week January 1st is. Um, oftentimes it's like January 3rd, January 4th, something like that when those come out. Um, okay, I'm looking at suggestions here. And Boss Merry Christmas in the copper. And a thin layer of cherry cobbler behind the holly. I like that. Let's, I like both of those ideas. Let's start by cutting that piece of cherry cobbler for behind. And um, this is four and a quarter by three inches. So I'm going to use four and a half. by three and a quarter. You're right, Sue. Sometimes it just takes some playing around to see. Hmm, what do you think, ladies? Should we go for it? Let's do. Let's just go for it. Alrighty. Um, before I adhere this, though, I want to put Merry Christmas on there. And I'm not, I don't see. Whoops. I'm beyond the, it scrolled past that comment, so I don't remember who suggested that. But we will give that a try. Oh, you guys, this is awesome. When I can't keep up with the comments, it's good. Okay. Boy, I wish I had somebody to clean up after me, after these Facebook Lives. Did I tell you what my, my dream setup is for Facebook Lives? It's kind of what they do at OnStage. They have a long table, and each um, part of the project or each different project has its own space and they just roll their chair along to the next spot and do that. How cool would that be, right? Who knows? I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to set things up downstairs. I have some thoughts and ideas and of course I'm limited. I have to say I don't love that builders will put your HVAC equipment right in the middle of your basement. And that's what happened. And then they have to be three feet off the front and back of that. So by the time they do it, that in itself ends up being a little room. <laughs> yes, Mary Lou, we probably do all one of us to do it. Okay, I should have used my embossing body. 
feel like it needs a little more powder on there. I love it that so many of you are on and we're getting awesome comments and, and feedback. I love that you're participating in the creation of this. But again, I wish one of you were here to clean up for me. I've got a lot of other work to do. Clean up isn't always high priority. But it needs to be tonight based on how much work I need to do before classes on Thursday and my trip on Friday. Plus, when I go away, I like to have my house clean and everything put together so that when I come home, it's it's nice to come home to. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Love it. What do you think? You know, next time I think I would actually make this part a little smaller. Get these a little bit closer or maybe less border. You know, less empty space, I should say. Okay. Oh, Kathy, thanks for sharing again. You're awesome. How many of you have done the heat embossing before? <laughs> That's true. I might not know where they are if things are put away where they're supposed to be. I used to say that to my kids when they couldn't find something. And I knew I had put it away for them at some point. Do you think it could be where it's supposed to be? Not one of my mom moments. Can't say it was the best mom moment. Husband. <laughs> you guys are funny. House is clean until your husband comes home. Yes, the embossing is mesmerizing. And Char, you do it a lot? Great. Okay. There you go. How do you like it? Thumbs up? Hearts? What do you think? I appreciate you all and your involvement in making this. Okay. So, here you can see I used, I would say this is probably my favorite. Well, I don't know. They're all close. I could even see me sending this card um, even without a sentiment on the front. I think just plain no sentiment, it would make a nice um, note card. And it would also be nice for holiday thank yous as well. Okay. All right. So there we go. So I would love it if you... Um, would try this very easy fun fold card that I don't know what to call it but just has that one extra um, scored line and fold okay and I would love to see you trying the um, copper foil if you haven't already we also have it in silver and gold and champagne I feel like there's one more color black. I believe we have black foil still. So. Okay. Yes, Marilyn, you can always bling it up a little bit more. You know what would be really neat? Let me show you this. Can anybody guess? Mary's fun fold. I'll go with that, Joyce. <laughs> That's why I love you so much. You're good for the ego. Can anybody guess what I'm going to do? Oh, the exciting thing that happened. Oh, I'm so glad you mentioned it, Wendy. I think it's it's exciting to me. I don't know if it is to others. But you can take, and I haven't used this for a while, so I'm afraid to squeeze it before it'll come out all over the place. And it's not coming. Hold on. This is the other thing. I want to go back to having everything within reach. Most of my stuff is, but it just is cramped. You can use this fine tip glue pen. And this does take a while to dry. Are you kidding me? There it is. 
and just put it over those berries. Stay within the raised copper embossing. And this is a good, good little dollop on each of these. Okay, I'm trying to make sure I don't have air bubbles. I think I'm good. Can you see that there? Okay, this will take a good little while to dry, okay, because of this glue. The glue typically dries quickly, but we aren't typically using this much at a time. So I'm gonna set this aside. I'm guessing it'll take at least a few hours, so I don't know if I'll be able to um, get back on later tonight and post it. It's already going on nine o'clock. But um, these, this will dry clear. And then you'll see. So it'll almost, um, it'll look as if there's an, um, what do I want to say, an enamel dot, a cherry cobbler enamel dot. Pam, I'm glad you like the cards. I'm glad you shared. And I'm glad you jumped on. I'm, I'm one known for losing track of time. That's easy to do. We're all busy. But I'm glad you're here. Okay. So um, I am going to add this to the other two cards. And... I will put one of these cards in the mail. I think I'm going to put this one in the mail to one lucky winner um, because it's the one that you all helped me design and you had many more fabulous ideas for it. Remember, when you're using this fine tip glue, you do want to close it up with that needle in there. because that's such a, a thin tube that it can um, clog up very easily. It'll dry up very easily. Okay, um, the thing I wanted to, I'm trying to think how I can show you this. And it might not be a big deal to you or to others that have, you know, an extreme number of followers, but I have to move this screen. Let me see how I can do that. So I'm still live, but I'm not seeing you right now because I need to go to a different screen. And then I need to grab the phone. Okay, so I work with, now hold this, don't get motion sickness with me moving the phone, but I have to do this. Okay, so I work with TypePad. That's where I do my blogging. So I go on at different times. Um, you know, I can start a new blog post. Um, I can check old blog posts, see what I have scheduled, see which is all, like, this is one that's in draft mode. Um, see if I have any scheduled, see what's already been posted. I can quickly go here and see if people commented, designing, changing my settings. But I'd love to go to this one when I open up my type pad because it says overview. Okay, now I will say the time on this is off for some reason because before the number up here, page views today was 268 and now I'm at 20. So I've tried to regulate the time on this, but um, I'm just not getting it. But what I love is this number right here. And again, when I looked earlier for the last 30 days, um, because this number was 268, this one was well over 4,000. And I had never seen 4,000 page views in the last 30 days. So what that tells me, and you can see it on the grid here too, that I'm growing, growing, growing. Um, you know, and it's just exciting. Like I said, it might not be a big deal to some of you or to some people that already have thousands and thousands of followers. Um, but for me, it is a big deal. And I do want to say thank you for being one of my followers. And thank you for sharing um, my Stampin' Up! business with your family and friends. And I look forward to doing um, lots more more posts, more Facebook Lives, more creating and more sharing. Um, I truly love what I do and I love the company I'm working with. Um, so I plan on being around a long time, so I hope you'll stick with me. 
Joyce, you want to know how to get to my blog. Okay. Um, the blog address, let me see. I'm going to go to the home page so you can see what a, cus a customer sees. So you type in um, Stampin' Peace, okay? And then it should come up. Maybe because I go to that so much, I'm not sure. Um, Stampin'Peace.typepad.com. So you can write that down or take a picture of that. That's how you get to my blog, okay? Yes, Pam, I also post to YouTube. Um, and the channel is Stampin' Peace with Mary Nabe. Go to YouTube first and then search Stampin' Peace with Mary Nabe. All separate words. So Joyce, I'm going to show you that. Great question. Thank you so much for asking. Okay, so here is a blog post that posted this morning. It's a video replay of a past Facebook Live from last week. And I show pictures and I usually have all the um, products that I used, etc. Off to the right side, um, there are some different things. You can search if you saw, oh, I remember Mary used that free skate stamp set. Okay. Um, you can type it in there. You can shop. Oh, why does it still have my September host code on? That's terrible. I got to change that. Um, you can email me directly with this link. You can follow me on Facebook. And what is this? YouTube, I guess, right? Now, if you want to get my blog updates, if you don't want to have to look for them, you just want them emailed, the blog post emailed to you, you can subscribe right here, blog, up, blog updates by email. If you are not already part of my newsletter subscription, you subscribe right here. I give information on my classes and events, um, Stampin' Up! promotions, promotions that might be my own. Um, unique to my own business. Um, I have been doing uh, free project sheets, um, just things like that. Um, so that's a great place to be as well. Oh, also classes to go. I have been um, listing those on my newsletter. So if you do not live local to me, but you would like to enjoy some of my classes, um, that's where you look for that information as well. Okay. And with the new year, I will be doing more. Um, I'm kind of revamping classes a little bit. And I will definitely be doing more classes to go. Um, but trying to, um, making some changes so that um, when I do them, um, it's a little bit easier for me to offer them both live and as to-go kits without having to recreate. Okay. So thank you, and yes, it is kind of a big deal to me. When I saw, like I said earlier today, and now the new day has changed, and again, the time is off. I just can't figure out how to regulate that. Um, it's close, but it, I know it's off by a few hours. Um, but when I saw that today, it was I had 268 views, and I was over 4,000 page views for the last 30 days. I was a happy camper doing my happy dance. All right, ladies, it's late. It's past nine o'clock. Um, so I've got some work to finish. I haven't had dinner. I'm sure you have things you want to do before you get off to bed. Have a wonderful week. Be safe um, and find some time to do something creative for yourself. Bye-bye.